when replacing brake lines on cars, eventually you're going to have to bend and cut them to size. Um, well, the uh, auto parts stores has them in varying lengths. When you get down to it, you're going to have to actually fit it to the car itself. Benders, I've tried a lot of different benders over the years. This is the style that I prefer, but there's others available. And it's a very simple process to actually use the bender. The line goes in, and it's merely pressing the levers to form the bend to whatever degree you need. After your bends are made, you'll want to next cut this to whatever length that you needed. In this case, just for example now, we'll just say this is how long we needed. Simple process, you use a tubing cutter and you align that. There's a cutting wheel on the cutter itself you align that with your mark and simply turn it and then tighten it a little, turn it some more until the tubing finally comes free. Now that the tubing's cut, the wheel actually pushes in the the sidewall, the material from the tubing. And I use a, just generally a pocket knife to ream out the burr that's created from the cutting process. And once I've completed that, I generally run the file over just the, the sharp edge, just to knock down the edge before creating an inverted flare. Next, always remember to put your fitting nut on before you create the inverted flare. Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> Moving next, we'll, we'll take this line into our flaring block and they're labeled for the size of the line. In this case, we're using 3 16 line. And we've selected the 3 16 hole. An inverted flaring kit, kit includes these dies to actually complete the flaring. The first step of the flaring is to decide how much of this tubing needs to stick out from the block. And in this case, you want to adjust it so that the tubing sticks out as much as the, the step on the die itself. Once we have that in at the right height, just tighten up the clamp. Set the die in there. Then tighten that up. And you just need to get it until it kind of bottoms out. No sense that you don't need to torque on it a lot just till the, it kind of reaches that point where it doesn't want to move down further. Now remove the die. 
And what it's done is it's sort of created bubbled shape. And now we'll push that down into a full flare fitting. And again, you don't have to force this at all. It shouldn't require a lot of force. And there you have it. That completes an inverted flare. You're ready to go make brake lines for your project now.